One of the easiest ways to cheat in a game of cards is to set up the deck beforehand and then deal out the cards when the game begins. However, life is not that easy. People like to shuffle and cut the deck. Like, why? Well, that's because people don't trust you. In fact, they don't trust anyone. And hence, we shuffle the deck. So what do you do if you still want to cheat in a game of cards? In short, you don't. Cheating is bad. <laughs> uh, I kill myself sometimes. You're gonna need to learn how to do a false shuffle before you deal out the cards. But the issue that a lot of people have is they don't know what shuffle to do or what shuffle looks authentic. One of the most common shuffles that people do around here is known as the riffle shuffle, where the cards are interleaved or riffled together and then bridged, making a really cool type of flourish. So it all comes down to one question. How can we make the riffle shuffle a false shuffle? Let's check it out. What up crew, hope you're doing well. My name is Vineet and I go by Card Mechanic here on YouTube. A card mechanic is a person who can fix a game of cards. A cheater, a card mechanic's a cheater. So that's why this is the place for you to learn the perfect false riffle shuffle. So before we begin, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe and now let's do this. All right, here we go. One thing I would have to say before we get started with this false riffle shuffle tutorial is you should probably know how to do the riffle shuffle because if you don't, what, what are you doing? So super quick tutorial for those of you who need it. You're gonna cut the deck in half, just something like this. Then you're gonna interleave both halves together. You can riffle using your thumbs, either like this or on the side like that. So whatever you wanna do, riffle those together, push them in. Now you're gonna hold it like this squeeze down on the sides and release with these fingers down here. And that's gonna make a riffling motion. So uh, there's a quick tutorial. I'm sure you can find way better tutorials on uh, YouTube or literally anywhere online, but definitely know how to do the riffle shuffle before uh, you continue with this. Mistakes were made on my part. Now I have to go through the deck again and organize it in new deck order. Otherwise we won't be able to tell anything. Whew, that took way longer than I would have hoped, but we made it. The deck is now in new deck order. Here's what's gonna happen now. You're gonna split the deck into two halves, just as you would proceed with a normal riffle shuffle. So you can literally do the exact same steps. I generally like to ferrule the cards together instead of riffling. I don't know, it just feels a lot cleaner to me, but you know, it is what it is. So when you're riffling these cards together, let me, let me ask you riffle so you also can see what I'm doing. When you're riffling these cards together, you wanna make sure that uh, the left half or the bottom half Right, so when you're riffling the cards together, you want the bottom half on the left side, you want the top half on the right side when you're uh, doing the shuffle. With the bottom half, you're gonna start riffling first. With the top half, you're gonna start riffling later. So when you're done doing the riffle shuffle, or when you're done riffling the cards together, the original bottom half will stay on the bottom and the original top half will stay on top. Here we are looking something like this. This would be the right side of the deck. This would be the left side of the deck. The right side is uh, the one with the card up top and the left side is the one that has the card down below. Let me just ferrule these cards together for my sanity because I was not thrilled with how that riffle shuffle looked. But so you see the right side, couple cards on top, left side uh, card on the bottom. So let me put this over to the side. When you're doing a normal riffle shuffle, right? Uh, let me just grab this deck here and ferrule the cards together. When you're doing a normal riffle shuffle, you come here, right? You do the shuffle and the cards end up looking something like that. Or if you're way better than I am, they're gonna be completely square. And if you could do that, I, uh, I bow down to you. But what's gonna happen with this method is we don't want the cards to be as square as possible. We want them to actually be misaligned. So let me do that one more time. Misalign the cards this time. All right, so now if you take a look, the cards are misaligned. And just to show you, it looks something like that. So you can kind of see where one half the deck is and where the other half the deck is, and everything in the center is actually interleaved. So what happens, in theory, what happens uh, during this false riffle shuffle is that you're practically just separating these two halves, right? You're separating these two halves and putting the correct one on top of the other one. And that's really all there is to it. Um, that's in a quick nutshell how it works. But let me walk a bit through a bit more through the technicalities and the mechanics of the move itself. After a lot of trial and error, here's what I found. 
you want the top corner of this entire packet, you want the top corner touching the center of uh, where your ring finger connects into your palm. So you want that card right here. And then the bottom corner of the left side, you want that touching the base of your ring finger with the other hand. So this is gonna go in like this on the right side and it's gonna go in like this on the left side. And then you're gripping everything else pretty much um, as you normally would. But now the deck will be shuffled together in a, um, a tilted way. So instead of the cards being shuffled directly against each other, they're being shuffled at an angle. So let me show you, let me do this shuffle and show you how it looks. So again, I'm using a borderless deck, so it's a little more difficult to see, but let me straighten this out here. You can see where one half separates from the other half. So um, after you do the riffle shuffle, right, you riffle shuffle it together, shift the deck, grab it with your left hand, shift it up, grab it again with your right hand, and now you're gonna do a swing cut. So on a swing cut, you're gonna take this packet, everything that's here, that's not in contact, over here you wanna really touch the cards that are, I guess, individually separated like this, using your index finger, and I even use my pinky finger to help out. You wanna grip using your uh, right thumb, grip this uh, where the cards are spaced out here on the uh, right hand side, you wanna grip like that, use your left index finger and swivel that whole packet out like this and then give the deck a cut. And that will keep the cards in new deck order. One more time going through that because I know I covered quite a lot. Break off the top half right hand, bottom half left hand. Personally, I just like to fair them together. Uh, make sure the right hand, you get a bit more cards on top. Left hand, you get a bit more cards on the bottom. Push them together, not too deep. And now make sure you get the grip with the uh, base of the ring finger here on the top right corner and uh, base of the ring finger here on the bottom left corner and riffle them together like you normally do. And as you can see, they'll be misaligned like this. You wanna make sure you're grabbing uh, the space where all these cards are right over here. And you wanna make sure you're gonna do a swivel cut for the cards that are over here on the side. As you can see, swivel cut happening. Boom, give the deck a cut and you'll see the cards are still in new deck order. A few tips I'd like to share before I wrap up is I'd recommend using a borderless deck. Of course, you don't have to use a borderless deck, but it's very difficult to see the separation of the deck. Let's say uh, we get to the shuffling position here. Uh, we do the shuffle. It's really difficult to see where one half begins and another half ends just because it's a borderless deck. So doing this move does become a little easier visually. It's more difficult uh, to perceive. Another tip I'd like to share is when you're doing, when you're in the process of bridging the cards together, you wanna make sure you kind of square up here and here you wanna make sure the cards are not misaligned here because the more square this part, the, the short sides of the deck are, the easier it's gonna to be to come over and swivel out these playing cards. And you also wanna make sure you're not gripping too tightly. So when you're swiveling out the cards, you wanna make sure you're not gripping out either half uh, too tightly. Let me show you what I'm talking about. You do that. You wanna make sure you're not gripping this too tightly with your ring finger and thumb. Otherwise, pulling these cards out, right? It's clearly, it's not swiveling. I can beat it with the hammer. We're gonna have issues. And the last tip that I'd like to share is that this move is a bit angle sensitive, especially if you're not using a borderless deck. People uh, on the right side of you or the left side of you could probably easily see it happening unless you really perfect this motion. So I'd recommend whenever you're doing this move, do it from the front. So when, you're, uh, when you riffle the cards together, uh, let me riffle the cards together, right, riffling, doing the thing. And then when you're pulling the cards out, make sure you're doing this in the direction of the spectator and then closing like that. If you wanna kind of exaggerate your wrist motions a little bit, that should be completely fine as that motion would cover up uh, what's going on. But again, test it out in front of a mirror. I'd highly, highly encourage you to practice, of course. Uh, it took me about two weeks, I would say, to get this as smoothly as I have it now. Of course, I still wanna practice on getting it even better until it's completely flawless. Being a card mechanic is not an easy task. You have to make false moves look like they are completely natural. And by natural, I mean they look exactly the same as how a normal person would do them. If there's even a slight giveaway of the move, it's all over. You're gonna get your hands chopped off.
If you enjoyed this video and want to continue improving your card mechanic skills, I have a full playlist of videos that you can check out right over there. If you truly want to be a card mechanic, I know that you'll get a lot out of it, so I hope to see you there.